Live from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's The Cube, covering Spark Summit 2016. Brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and Peter Burris. And welcome back to the Spark Summit 2016. We're here in the Hilton, San Francisco for uh, the first of two days of coverage here on theCUBE. I'm John Walls and I'm joined by Peter Burris, who is the Chief Research Officer at Wikibon and on theCUBE. Peter, good to have you with me here. It's great to be here, John. You guys have been doing a wonderful job. Oh, well, I know we got a great new guest. Absolutely. <laughs> Joel Horowitz is with us, uh, Director yeah. of Strategy and Business Development at IBM Analytics. Hi guys. Joel, good to see you, sir. Good to be here. Yeah, first off, give me your take of what's happening here. I mean, this is a, uh, this show's come a long way in a very short period of time. Yeah, I mean, Spark continues to you know, maintain its momentum, and I would say it's, it's definitely, you, know, you see it here, there's a lot of interest. I think there's more booth. The booths got smaller, I feel like, but there's more of them in here, which I think is a good thing. I think, you know, we were talking about our event that we had last night mm -hmm. at our uh, Spark event at Galvanize, and we were talking about like, geez, you know, we grew it like three times, um, we're like, so should we get a bigger place? I'm like, no, you know what? Keep it in a smallish space and just like, mm -hmm. you know, keep this concentrated community in here. And I think that's what, you know, the Databricks team and the Spark Summit team has done really well, has been not to try to like capture, you know, like and start inviting Hadoop, you know, ecosystem folks here and like try to bring in more and more ecosystem folks. They've really kept it, you know, focused on this, you know, really dedicated Spark community. And I think you, you can see the kind of like, you know, the interests of people that it's just, you know, it's about Spark. So I think it's, it's a good thing. Well, John, I'd actually say that we should define something that we might call the cube heat index, <laughs> which is the temperature around the cube. The, as a the enthusiasm of the as energy as index. The enthusiasm of the number of people milling around. It's about 99.9 right now. It is, it's getting up. You know, it's been like that all day. Yeah. And, and uh, you certainly you feel it. You, you felt it at the keynotes, I thought, this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of deep learning discussion, but uh, yeah. you know, to hear from Matei Zaharian talking about um, 2.0 and what's mm -hmm. happening with that. Um, right. I mean, so I hear all these things. I mean, why in your opinion, why is Spark thriving? Why is it taken off? Well, and, so and Spark has really become the true you know, analytic operating system. I, we, we, we said that last year and we're starting to see it more and more. Um, you know, you bring up Spark 2.0, you know, our team, we launched a Spark Technology Center last year around this time. Mm -hmm. And we've really put our you know, money where our mouth is. You know, we've, we've contributed you know, a ton of code to Spark SQL. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly we have a background in SQL. You know, it's, it's cool to hear where Matei is you know, taking the project, kind of starting to lead into deep learning with like, folks like Andrew Ng you know, talking about you know, what he's doing at Baidu and Jeff Dean at Google. So you know, it's exciting to see like, the, the leading edge is still going, right? That they're not like, stopping. But at the same time, I mean, we're focused on truly making this an operating system so that you know, people from many backgrounds can use this, whether you're an R programmer or a SQL you know, analyst, like, you know, it's really accessible. Mm -hmm. so, so ultimately, I mean, it's, it's always about the user at the end of the day, you know, the yep. value, right, whether it's for a customer or an individual customer or a, an enterprise. Yep. So, so, I mean, what does Spark do, you think, from a unique standpoint mm -hmm. that creates that one of a kind value or that special yep. value right now. So, so again, it's all about the people, right? So, so IBM design, you know, came on strong um, the last couple of years. You can see it across our portfolio, across analytics with Watson Analytics for, you know, the citizen analysts, all the way up to what we're doing in our cognitive businesses. Um, and we're, we're doing the exact same thing as we think through Spark and analytics and as an analytic operating system. And so, you know, this week we announced the data science experience. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of trying to be, you know, the, the one notebook to rule them all, um, we really focused in and we did um, a lot of research. We interviewed hundreds of data scientists um, to really figure out what makes them tick and what they're really looking for in terms of an experience and a, you know, an environment for them to, to really be successful. Mm -hmm. Last year, um, you, you put your money where your mouth is, right? <laughs> uh, and stepped up in a huge way in terms of your commitment to the Spark community. Yep. What have you seen? What's the ROI been for IBM in that year? And, yep. and, and what do you think, even beyond that, yep. what do you think that contribution has done to take Spark to the next level? So when we think about ROI, I think most folks just think about like, okay, what is the incremental you know, revenue that we added to the top line? Um, you know, Spark is now being used across the port, you know, across IBM, Watson, Cloud, Commerce, 
you know, everywhere, right? And, and that's telling, right? And so, you know, we eat our own dog food. So in that case, like we're, it, so it's, the ROI here isn't just, like I said, incremental. Mm -hmm. It's actually our development is faster. So like when the example of data works, we went from 50 million lines of code down to 5 million, mm -hmm. right? That's a huge drop in terms of, you know, how fast we can bring products to market. The data science experience we built very, very quickly on Spark. That's why it was built Spark native. Um, and we're able to iterate extremely fast. And so the ROI for us is really about bringing products to market faster and also iterating faster because look, this is an emerging market. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not sure exactly where this data is going to take us, right? Is it AI? Is it, you know, this or that? And so, you know, if you're not able to work agile and think, you know, um, quickly and be able to put out products quickly, then you're going to be left behind. So, without speaking for IBM, yeah, I'll answer the question slightly differently and then, and then ask you a question. Sure. So, uh, probably six or seven years ago, I attended one of the IBM Partner World conferences. Yep. Uh, and Ginny Romady, the CEO, was there, and she stood in front of everybody and she said, IBM is going to serve the CMO. Get to know the CMO. They're going to be an incredibly important person in your lives, to all of these partners. Yep. And a whole bunch of partners scratched their heads. IBM since then has, you know, not just limited itself certainly to serving the CMO, but has been active at bringing out technologies mm -hmm. that really can help businesses improve the engagement that they have with their markets. Yep. And the technologies that are very important to IBM proving that mm -hmm. are the ones that provide greater cachet for IBM as an innovator. IBM has always had to walk that fine line between following for the enterprise yep. and innovating for those kind of core problems. Yep. And so here's a question. Shoot. Uh, it seems as though this, one of, the, one of the ROIs, one of the big sources of value to IBM is that Spark and your relationship to Spark and your investment with Spark mm -hmm. are a proof point of your commitment to going after that new class yep. of problem yep. that's associated with engaging markets and doing a better job of operations. Yep. How are you, what are you, what are you doing? Are you making any announcements that are really intended to increase the size of yep. the community, yep. increase the engagement with the community, yep. and open up new avenues for new problems? Yep, so that's, that, those are great points. And so, last year, just to be clear, I mean, we were the first, first you know, large corporation, right? Um, that invest in Apache Spark. Well, everyone was still talking Hadoop, even a lot of the Hadoop vendors. So we were willing to kind of you know, disrupt ourselves, frankly, because we had a Hadoop, we have a Hadoop distribution, and we were willing to do that with Spark because there was still a lot of questions like, well, is Spark a replacement for Hadoop? Is it not? You know, we don't have to go there. But we were the first through the door that said, we see this, we see this as a strategic you know, opportunity, and, and we invested. We open source system ML, which is essentially what you know, our cognitive business is built on, is a very, you know, we were the first to do that for machine learning. Then you saw Microsoft and Google's and others come after us. So I think in a lot of ways, you know, we were first through the door in terms of recognizing the value of Spark. And so this year, we're also, you know, some of the first folks that are looking at, all right, now that we have this analytic operating system, what, do you, what does every operating system need? Well, you need a, you know, integrated develop it, development environment. And right? a lot of users. And a lot of users. And where are you going to find those users? Are they going to go out and teach them all, you know, Scala and these things? I hope so. Scala is a great language, but there's a lot of folks who are still No, you using... don't. You don't hope that they're all going to learn Scala. <laughs> I do. We partner with Lightbend. We're very excited to be supporting Scala. It's a very nice language. But look, there's a lot of our, you know, programmers out there, over two million by our estimate. There's a ton of Python users out there, you know. Um, a lot of SQL folks, you know, that are out there. And look, you know, they're, they're looking at job security, frankly, and so they're, that's what they know, that's how they, that's how they you know, interact with data, and so and, we're not going to, you know. And, and they want to create them. new value for the businesses that they're in, whether they're software developers or enterprise developers. But here's my point, this is where I'd, I'd like, to, like to push you on this point. Yep. Here's my point, so many, many years ago, as a young, uh, as a young IT person, uh, I was in a room, it was the first, one of the first times I was invited to a management meeting, and we were sitting around a table, and it was a long time ago. And we were sitting around a table, and we were talking about how end user computing was going to unfold. Mm. This is the mid 1980s. And one of the most senior guys, developers in the room, said, Well, 
they're all going to learn to do programming in C. Yeah. And we're all looking at each other saying, our executive team is going to learn to do programming in C. <laughs> and the guy said, if they can't learn to program in C, they should be taken out and shot. And I remember thinking, that's, a little bit that's harsh. not going to work. Yeah. The point is, is that there are large numbers of individuals yeah. that still want to look at a computer as nothing but a tool that yeah. is an extension of how they think. Yeah. And yeah. so as we bring well, in those new developers, we're all just going to have to come up with new experiences, new ways yep. of bringing new classes of decision makers and problem solving yep. into the community. Yeah, so, so there's, a, there's a number of ways to look at this. Um, so you have to think holistically about what you just described. So our, you know, that's why we have you know, things like Watson, right? And you think about, you know, in a lot of other ways um, for different people to consume data and analytics, right? And so whether it's through the command line interface, whether it's through a, a you know, you might be a visual person, or maybe it's you know, question and answer back and forth, um, there, you're going to see a ton of different ways that IBM is basically um, opening data and analytics to a broad set of, of individuals. And you know, coming back to the data science piece, which is where our focus is today, um, you know, we also joined the R Consortium. So outside of, you know, you know, of, of a lot of proprietary stacks, you know, the, the, the R community has continued to grow because they're built, you know, there's 9,000 packages now right, that exists there for very specific domain problems, right? And so we recognize that, look, there's this community there, they're no different than any other open source community, um, and they needed the support of someone like IBM to come in and actually bring that in, you know, to the enterprise um, and make it reliable and actually, you know, and link that tightly to Spark so that they can actually work with any type of data. People think like, oh, Spark, it's another big data technology, it's not. I mean, it is, but it's not only that. It's really a, it's a translator for working with all types of data. So the complexity piece, that's really the part that we are seeing our clients struggle with. Not the volume piece, I mean, that's important, but I actually think there's more value if you can start working with you know, all types of data, audio, visual, log, whatever. So yeah, it's exciting. So do you think Spark is going to be that platform that we bring all these yeah. formats in under the umbrella of analytics. Yeah, I think Spark has all of the pure, you know all of the uh, all of the exact ingredients we need. It has you know has distributed computing, right? It has you know in memory. It has you know really elegant APIs that anyone can use and build on. Um, it has a great streaming service. It has machine learning, and they're gonna we're gonna do a lot more to make that better. Um, so it has all of these like core components that not only you know make it useful, it's also very portable. So one of the things that Hadoop struggled with is, you know, I would, I would ask you to go and talk to some of these folks, how many of you have Hadoop installed on your laptop? No one is going to raise their hand. It's hard, like it doesn't even make sense. But how many have Spark installed? I guarantee you all of them will, right? And that's exactly what Linux did for, you know, for the Unix world, right? No one installed Unix on a laptop. Linus Torvalds went off, out, bought a you know, PC off the shelf, and he's like, I can't install Unix on this thing. So he reinvented, he scaled it down, took the key components he needed, and, and then when he was able to put on his laptop. And that's where most folks start today, is on their laptop. Before you take off, I, I, sure. I know we talked about this past year. Yeah. Let's go forward. You know, yeah. look at, if we're sitting, the three of us are sitting here in, in 2017, knock on wood, um, what would you consider to be, you know, kind of benchmark activity? What, yeah. what would you say, yeah, this, that was a pretty good year, this is what I expect to say. I, I really hope that we can expand the community. I really hope that we can get more people involved. I think there's still a lot of fragmentation in the data analytics community. Um, so 2017, I would love to see you know, people rally around Spark as this operating system. You know, there's other competing kind of similar um, stacks out there, right? Which is great, I, you know, I, I appreciate a thriving community. Um, but you know, for this market truly to, to grow in the way that Linux kind of lifted up the whole computer science era, so to speak, um, I think we're on the verge of the data science you know, era, mm -hmm. and we just need you know, all of these folks to come together and kind of get behind the community and drive you know, a single kind of way for us to like, think and, and work in, with data. So for me, I would love to have you know, um, data scientists be involved, data analysts be involved, data engineers be involved, chief data officers be involved, um, and connect that back to application development and forward to the line of business. I well, think that'll be really exciting. Well, now we've got you on tape. 
a year from now we'll replay. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, we'll see, see how, how good. We'll, we'll see, see how, how far it, we get. It's been a great year, certainly, and looking forward to an even better year in 2017. Joel, thanks for great. joining us here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Right. The Cube continues here from San Francisco Spark Summit 2016.